So we're starting off here with our default controller, class my pages extends ci underscore controller. And we have our constructor function here. So the constructor function runs before everything else. It's a little housekeeping before you get into the other methods of the class. And what I've done is I've added in here. So um, if there is no session user data language, then we're going to set the user's language to English right here. So if the user was here for the first time, they're getting their session set, but they're not going to have anything set for their language. And we looked at that um, variable last time in the database. So um, if this isn't set, there's nothing there, then we're going to set the user data, we're going to set the language to English, and just assume they speak English. Later on, if they change that drop-down box to French, then they get their user data uh, set to French, and this gets overwritten. So we can go to our um, our main uh, our main function here, which is index. So um, if the people just visited like like this page, right, like that, or they take off my pages even, well, we know that this is our um, default controller, my pages, because we set that in routes.php, and the default method is this index one right here. And what we're doing here is we're loading in our header and we're loading in our main view and loading in our footer. So let's take a quick look at those. Let's start off with um, include slash view header. And inside here, um, I'm using um, HTML5 boilerplate. So what I did was basically um, just went to HTML5 boilerplate. That's, um, you can just type that into Google HTML5 boilerplate. And you're going to get um, basically this is not in the MVC, it's just like HTML and JavaScript files and stuff like that. And you can download it. And what I did was I just grabbed out um, the header and footer parts of that. And I put um, the header parts into my header.php right here. Um, some of the more important bits here is um, I'm including jQuery and jQuery UI. Actually, I, I'm not using jQuery UI in this one, so I could take that out, but. Um, I often use jQuery UI, so I just left that in there. And um, this other stuff is um, comes from Boilerplate. Um, one interesting thing I have here is for the title. Well, first I'm just checking if this title variable is set. And um, if it is set, then I'm going to use the title. And if it's not set, then I just have this default value of nice title. So this is a nice thing to have um, in your uh, header files which means like we could pass um, inside our controller we could pass this header as a second parameter we could pass it here data right and then inside somewhere here we have data and then we have um, for example the title okay so if we set um, data title right here and we set that to you know some title well after that when we put data right here um, this is going to get um, passed into um, the view and even though I just have data right here we're sending the whole array and inside the view um, this data dot title is going to be accessible like dollar sign title okay so um, let's just remove these now and go back there so basically um, our header file is uh, set up so it could it, ha it could have a title passed in but if it doesn't then we're just using this default as a ni nice title and we have the same thing going on with the description. It can be passed in, but it also has the default value. And I think that's all I want to talk about for um, the header. And let's go to the footer, and that's all there is for the footer. Um, I guess that's still important nonetheless. So um, let's close those guys up. And you see in the middle here we have view my pages. It's not being passed anything, and so let's take a look at it. So at the start of this, um, the user language is being set to whatever the user data language is. And this is always going to have a value here because remember, um, in our constructor function, we set one here if they didn't have one. But probably they'll have them if they visited this web page before. And um, after that, I'm using this right here, which is this lang load. I'm loading in contact form underscore and then concatenating on the user language and then the second parameter is user language here too um, so basically you can see this is going to be 
this is going to be a, either a value of English or it's going to be about a string value of French. And we're going to store that inside user language here because that's easier to work with. And then here is the start of our language class stuff. Let's talk about this line here. Uh, this lang load uh, method and inside we have uh, contact form underscore and then concatenate on the user language and the second parameter is the user language too um, and this is referring to um, if you go inside your application folder then um, under uh, go to language and then I have two folders here I have English and French and I created the French one here and um, inside the English one we have this just make this a bit bigger we have contact form English lang.php and the French one has contact form French lang.php and these file names are pretty important because they match up here so um, here you'll notice like right now we'll have contact underscore form underscore English and then this I believe is referring to the folder name that they're in so um, this is also going to be English so if we look to the left here we'll see we have our um, inside our application folder we have the language folder and then the in we have the English folder here that matches with this and then um, basically this contact form English uh, in our file name we're going to add on underscore lang okay but here we don't need to add on underscore lang and it's important that they are like that so this doesn't have underscore lang but this does okay and once we do that it has loaded it um, into our view here and we can now use it okay the next thing we're doing is we're setting the form attributes and um, basically just giving an ID to my form, contact form. Um, I talked more about the um, form helpers in a previous video. So if you don't understand what this means or if you don't understand what that means, um, just look at my form helper from before or else my um, register and login video. And here we have echoing form errors. So this is connected with um, the validation class. So um, we have an input field. Uh, with the name of sender name and we have a text area of sender message and if there was any server-side validation errors um, we are going to echo out the error here um, in these two places. What we're doing now is we're creating two arrays data name array and data message array and this is preparing some of the attributes this is the attributes that's going to go on the input field and these are the attributes that's going to go on to the um, text area one so name we're giving a name of sender name um, value is set to this lang line name value and ID is set to sender name uh, we use this for jQuery to grab a hold of it um, there's other ways in jQuery to get a hold of it but um, I just put this ID on there for convenience and you'll see here that under value this lang line there's no um, it's not specifying here whether it's English or French um, but it doesn't need to because we've done that up top here when we loaded it in and we have the we got the language from their session and then we can concatenate on there so we already know which language we're working with so here we just need to use this line right here so that prepares the attributes for those two things and let's go down here now into our contact form so um, if the user language is set to English then um, inside this select right here with the name of language, we're going to display the two options. But we're going to put the English one French, the English one first, and we're going to put French one second. Okay. But if it wasn't English, then we know it was French, and we're going to show these options. But we're going to show the French one first, and then the English one second. And this basically just has to do with usability. I mean, if you're a French user and you've already said it's French before, and then you go back to the next page and you see English on the top well you're going to think there's something wrong with the site because you didn't remember what your language is so this is just um, for usability and it's just better design for the site and if we keep going down here uh, we have the h1 of contact us and then we've just put our contact form um, inside a table here and the um, the first table data cell that has ID of name and um, we are echoing out this the name right here so basically this is going to um, this is going to get the value of the name whether it's English or French 
And if we go over to um, the form here, we can see that a lot clearly. Clearly, right here we have the French name. We change that to English. That's name and message. Go to French. It changes to um, the French versions. So that that TD cell. This is what we're referring to right now. And um, we keep uh, moving along here. Um, the next TD here we have here we have the input, the form input, and we're passing in that data name array, which has got all of its attributes. So the form input. Um, gets all of its attributes from right here and sort of the same deal with message um, we're getting the, um, the message label tag um, that's appropriate to the language and the text area and it's getting attributes passed in um, in the array right here the last thing we have here is we have this form submit right here and this is um, this is the type is the submit or perhaps this is the um, ID. Let's check. We can go to the um, source right here, and we can go down to our um, submit. So we here we have type of submit, and a name of submit, and then a value of send. Um, however, that value um, gets overwritten. Right, submit, and then go French and it's submettre. So um, basically, basically that's how all of that works. The last thing we have here is div ID of validation errors. And I use this um, for JavaScript. So if we have some front end um, validation errors, um, you know, we can, uh, they're all going to get placed in here, whatever JavaScript errors we generate. We're going to place them inside this div. Um, you can also do without this div. For example, like in jQuery, um, instead of putting this at, you don't want um, that extra markup in your document, you can do that too. And then you'll just create that element um, using JavaScript and then place, um, you know, place whatever error message you want into it. But for my case, I just um, left in there market markup and that works fine too. And then finally, uh, we're closing the form. So basically, that's everything that's going on um, in our main view right here. And in the next uh, video, we'll get into the code a little bit more.